Over the past couple of years, South African representation on the ATP and WTA circuit has been minimal and success on a grand scale, few and far between. Of late, Cape Tonian Lloyd Harris has been playing up a storm and producing some massive victories, most recently taking down 20-time Grand Slam winner Rafael Nadal at the Washington Open. As you can imagine, going pro is no easy feat. Not only does it take hard work and commitment, but you also require a financial backer in your corner. Corner. Joining the tour and getting that momentum going is quite expensive, so what do you do if you don't have that backing? Well, you ask your community to help. That's the route 19-year-old Robbie Ahrens has to take to make his dream a reality. After impressing at junior level, winning 13 singles and double junior ITF titles and keeping a consistent South African top 10 ranking since the age of 10, he now believes he's ready to take his talents to the next level. Robbie joins us in studio and I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that you've been tearing up the courts since age 10. Where did this ambition come from? Uh, hi Zian, yeah, it's good to be here man. I really appreciate the opportunity. The ambition began like my dad introduced me to the sport at a very young age and ever since then I just fell in love with the sport. Just didn't want to stop. No, I just couldn't stop at all. Now, how exactly did you break through into the top 10 so quickly? I guess I played a lot of tournaments. I started tournaments at a young age, at the age of five. And with all the experience from keep on playing and doing well and getting better and better, I guess I just kept the ranking up. Needless to say, you've had a, a pretty uh, successful junior career. Uh, what's the highlight been so far? I would say representing my country in the different international tours that I've been on in Japan and also winning my first singles and doubles ITF titles that meant a lot to me I worked hard for that yeah and reaching a career high of 177 mm. that also was quite a big highlight for me because I struggled in the beginning of my ITF career and then it picked up in my like final two years I just worked hard changed my mentality and I'm just uh, really proud of how I did in my last year when exactly did you realize that hey I've got what it takes to go pro. Well, I've always felt like I have what it takes to go pro. Like when I was a young age and I started doing well and I'm top 10 in the country for so many years, I thought, hey man, I think I have the talent. Huh? And then when I went to the Anthony Harris Tennis Academy and was around um, Anthony and he told me about all the top players and told me that I have what it takes, just need to keep working hard. But obviously financially it's tough for, to go travel to all these tournaments and things. But practicing with Lloyd Harris as well, I feel like I have what it takes. Following in Lloyd's footsteps and trying to make it big as a tennis player in South Africa, just how important is it rubbing shoulders with the right people, with those guys, and uh, joining a tennis academy? Yeah, no, it's really important because there's not many of these kind of academies in South Africa. I think Anthony's one of the only. And like it's just really nice to be around all these kind of players, all these kind of professionalism and get all the things that you need. I see when it comes to tournaments in Europe, your participation in them quite limited at the moment. Just how important is it getting that experience under the belt and playing those guys over there? And what are your limitations participating in those tournaments? Uh, yeah, like in the tournaments in Europe, like obviously it's really expensive to play them. And that's why like budget wise, it was always like easier to travel in Africa and play tournaments in Africa but obviously it's really important to play players in Europe get that experience play against that level because they do have a higher level of tennis there but I guess just financially it was really tough to play in those places. In your experience how tough is it being an ambitious tennis player in South Africa and what type of backing are you getting from Tennis South Africa? Yeah no, Tennis South Africa do help where they can Obviously, it's really tough because, I mean, it's obviously a lot of tennis players that would like this opportunity or that opportunity to go out there and um, travel and play all these tournaments. But, yeah, I have, like, the Match Foundation helped me a lot in my junior career. They sponsored almost all my tours to travel. And, yeah, so now it's just moving on to the next level. Obviously, we need more sponsors, bigger sponsors, to be able to travel more. You've put your future in your own hands, starting a back buddy campaign, and you've set quite an ambitious target of 1 million rand. How exactly is that going to assist you in your journey to the pros? For the 1 million rands for, let's say, to travel, um, to travel to 27 tournaments roundabout, which will give me a nice like start to try and make it, give me a good opportunity to make it as a pro. Because, I mean, a lot, of play, a lot of people say it takes three years through the Futures Tour, but obviously you need to start somewhere. So 1 million will be enough to, obviously, for all the equipment, all the traveling and all the expenses for a year of, of tournaments. Now going from junior level to senior level, it couldn't have been an easy thing to do. 
What's been the biggest challenge? Challenge, I would say the level is like pretty high, but for me, it's maintaining it in against those, those guys. Because they're all like the same level as juniors almost, but the, the, the level of professionalism goes up. You need to be way more professional on the court, keep the same level. Now, you only recently made the transition to senior level, and it's been quite a challenging time. How tough has it been competing and keeping that rhythm and form going in times of COVID? Yeah, like I started like going pro properly when I was in 2020, and then I played my first uh, Futures of the Year, the first uh, pro t professional tournament. And then as I finished, that's when COVID started. So then my next tours and stuff got cancelled, obviously, because you couldn't travel. And yeah, it's been tough. But during lockdown, we got given a fitness program to follow to try and keep our fitness up. But obviously, yeah, it's been tough though. So what's next? What's next? Well, in the next, within the next two weeks, I'm going to Johannesburg and Pretoria. They are three professional tournaments there and those are my next tournaments. I wish you the best of luck and I know you're going to do absolutely brilliantly up there. Uh, now just to bring in mom who's been the person running everything behind the scenes and making it all tick for young Robbie Yonita. Can you give us an update on how the crowdfunding campaign has been going and why you guys opted to take that route? So we decided to take this giant leap into crowdfunding. During COVID it's been very difficult to raise funds and corporates don't have a million rand to give Robbie or many people at this stage. So we decided to go with crowdfunding. Everybody gives a little bit of money and the more people that donate, we will reach our target, I do believe. I just was not gonna sit back and let Robbie's hard work all over the years go to nothing. I believe he can and I believe we can start spreading this crowdfunding campaign. It's starting to gather momentum. Initially, it was a bit difficult to convince people during this time that, you know, the tennis player needs money. So people are buying into the idea and they are starting to donate. Some people don't want to do it over crowdfunding platforms and they'd give anonymous donations. We also got dad in here. We're going to bring him in. Uh, he's been coaching young Robbie since the age of four. Now, when did you start to see that, hey, this kid can one day win a Grand Slam? I think it was the one time we were um, on our way to, to the beach and we stopped at a tournament and he was watching and then someone said, um, hey, is there anybody here that'd like to um, play a match because somebody um, cancelled? And I asked my son, would you like to go up there? And he took his racket, this little kid, and he started playing a match against this, for this anonymous kid uh, in the tournament and the crowd were going crazy. Then that was it. <laughs> and then we just knew that he had what it takes because he was in that environment and he just flourished. And then from that day on, I just pumped him. As a father, you must be extremely proud of Robbie's accomplishments. Uh, can I ask you, which of the Grand Slams do you want to see him win first? Oh, that is tough. Eh? It's his dream, I think. I think mine is, I'm happy that the fact that he's playing tennis and he's going to go pro, that's enough for me. The rest is, I told him I'll take him to that level and it's yours but obviously Wimbledon <laughs> <laughs> um, okay just lastly how do we assist Robbie and how can we get in touch with you okay so you can contact me via email on orenswanita at gmail.com my cell phone number is 0662-675-919 and the Backer Buddy link is www.backerbuddy.co.za slash Robbie Orens